Hello, I'm Andy Sophia Fontaine, the editor at Eisen Review, and this is Eisen News Review. Did you know that one of the least talked about after effects of a volcanic eruption here in Iceland is something called Nótnahár, that is, witch's hair. Wondering what that is? We'll find out this and more in this episode. On August 22nd, we had yet another eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula in southwest Iceland. This is the fifth eruption so far this year. Um, which, and you can see Reykjanes Peninsula right there on this giant map. Now, when the fissure first opened, it was one and a half kilometers long, but within an hour, it had already stretched to four kilometers. Evacuations of Grindavik and Blue Lagoon went really well. Like, it only took less than an hour to get everybody out of there, but n neither of those places were in any danger. And as with all previous eruptions in that area over this past year or so, international flights were never endangered either. It is still safe to fly to Iceland. The eruptions are not going to get in the way of you flying to Iceland. So by the next day, the hazard level of the immediate area had been decreased. Now, when people talk about hazard levels, and this has been misinterpreted in international media sometimes, hazard levels refer specifically to a zone, like in Reykjanes Peninsula, a very small area, not the entire country. So when there's an emergency level in the hazard assessment, it's not referring to the entire country, it's just localized at the eruption site. In this case, the hazard level had been dropped by the next day, and it's showing that this eruption follows the general maximum that the more powerful it begins, the more quickly it peters out. Now, that's not like a hard and fast rule. There are, of course, exceptions. This eruption was not such an exception. Of course, lava is not the only thing that you need to worry about when it comes to an eruption. There are also poisonous gases at play as well. And there were poisonous gases that were being emitted by this eruption. Fortunately, Fortunately, Iceland is just as much the land of wind as it is the land of fire and ice, as they often say, which means that a lot of this gas was dissipated from the area immediately, usually sent out to sea. But even if it goes north, even if it goes near human settlements, it's not necessarily extremely hazardous. It's not a good idea to be at the eruption site when the wind is still. That can be very dangerous, of course. But by the time it blows up to Reykjavik, for example, like the worst that you're going to experience is like kind of like a slight stinging in the back of your throat or your eyes. Um, it's generally advised to stay indoors and keep your windows closed during that time, but it's okay to be outdoors in Reykjavik, at least when there's gas pollution coming from this eruption. One other effect though, that I thought was really interesting about the eruptions is a thing that is called Nótnahár, as I mentioned in the beginning of this vi video, which is hair. Outside of Iceland, this is known as Pele's hair, which refers to the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. This occurs most prominently in fissure eruptions where there are lava plumes, and the Reykjanes eruptions have all been fissure eruptions. So when the lava is spouting into the air, okay, the wind will cool some of this lava into very thin strands of what's essentially volcanic glass. And it's very light and it can be carried very, very far and can accumulate. Now, people in um, Reykjanes have found piles of witch's hair, like on their cars or on their back decks or wherever. And so a general advisory had to be issued reminding people how to deal with it because it's basically fiberglass, you know, like in fiberglass insulation. Um, and you wouldn't touch fiberglass insulation with your bare hands, so you don't touch witch's hair with your bare hands either. That said, you also shouldn't try to touch it with gloves if it's laying on something like your car or some sort of surface where you care about uh, the paint job because grabbing it, even with gloved hands, can leave scratches on your car or other surfaces. And so it's advised instead to use like either a leaf blower or a garden hose or something to blow or wash the witch's hair away. And eventually it will break down into its smallest component, that being sand which I thought was kind of cool. And that's what you need to know. If you see witch's hair, which is, looks like very thin, um, well, you'll see a picture on this video to show you what to look for. Last Sunday, tragedy struck. 
and that um, an ice wall collapsed when a tour group was visiting an ice cave near Breda Merkur Jokic in Vatna Jokic National Park. Um, this ice wall collapse resulted in the death of one man and serious injuries to a pregnant woman who is reportedly, though, recovering well. And this has raised a lot of questions, um, such as how did this happen? Who's responsible? Will it be prevented in the future? And is it safe to visit ice caves at, at all? So responsibility is a complex subject. Now, the tour group was being led by a, a tour company called Ice Pick Journeys, and they went to Vatnajoko National Park for this particular tour. Vatnajoko National Park, they issue work permits to tour companies year round and to do whatever they want to do in the park. And that would include visiting ice caves in the summertime. But the conventional wisdom amongst, yo amongst locals here has been that you don't visit an ice cave in the summertime. Like from April to October, locals generally don't explore ice caves and glaciers. And so the hazard report, which um, came out in 2018, did not include this particular warning because it was just assumed that it was conventional wisdom. And indeed, summer, summer tours didn't begin in ice caves until very, very recently, that is after this report was released. Um, this was backed up actually by Johannes Thor Skulason, the managing director of the Icelandic Travel, Indus Travel Industry Association, <laughs> um, where he had said that like, most tour companies do not do summer tours of ice caves for safety reasons, even if some ice caves are actually safe to visit year round. That's just to be on the safe side, err on the side of caution, most tour groups will not take people to an ice cave in the summer. So those who wish to conduct a tour um, in the national park are required to have a safety plan in place. And this is submitted to the Icelandic Tourist Board. Now the Icelandic Tourist Board doesn't make requests for safety plans from every single company that's operating in this national park. Rather, they take a sample of companies and Ice Pick Journeys was not one of the companies who was asked to submit a safety plan for Vatnajökull National Park. Director Atnamar Olafsson said that they are definitely considering expanding the scope of requesting these security plans to include every single company operating in Vatnajökull National Park, and that's a lot of companies. So will this be prevented from happening again? Well, in the wake of this, um, Johannes had said that the next step should absolutely be um, people from the national park, people from the travel industry, and people from the government getting together to come up with a plan. And that includes raising the question of whether or not they should even allow ice cave tours in the summertime. And this was echoed by our prime minister, Bjarni Benediktsson, who following this tragedy said, and this is a quote, at first glance, it seems we have a decent regulatory framework concerning insurance, education, safety measures, and similar matters. The national park issues the permits, and I find it concerning that permits were issued during a time when the risk assessment indicated that the situation was not without danger. So we can absolutely expect new regulations to arise from this. Now, to the question, is it safe to visit ice caves? The answer is yes, in fact, like especially in the winter time. Bear in mind that this is the first such tragedy of its kind that has occurred at an ice cave. There a lot of fun to visit, and I would recommend going so like between October and April. They're very beautiful, very haunting, and you can have a lot of fun there. It can be a very worthwhile experience. And in the wake of this, it's encouraging to see that all parties have come together to very quickly put into place measures to ensure that a tragedy of this nature never happens again. In happier news, um, the Minister of Justice recently honored a U.S. military helicopter crew who, that had helped rescue some Icelanders who were trapped on a tugboat 30 years ago. This is an incredible story. So the tugboat, Golden, um, it lost power. And in 1994, this tugboat lost power and the crew of six ended up being washed into the, shallow, the shallows of Vödlevík and became stuck there. And at that time, um, Icelandic rescue crews tried to retrieve them, to save them from danger. They did, tried to do so from shore, they tried to do so from helicopters, but the weather was just too terrible to be able to rescue them. So these six guys stood on the roof of this ship, watching helplessly 
as these rescue teams were trying to save them but could not. And I'm sure that they saw their life flashing before their eyes and were wondering what was going to happen next. Fortunately, a US military H-860 Pave Hawk helicopter, <laughs> it's a very long name for a helicopter, was equipped for this rescue operation and they flew out there and they lowered a harness and retrieved them one by one from danger. Um, this was a momentous occasion in the history of Icelandic rescue operations because they did a complete reassessment of all of their equipment and their training and their methods. The Coast Guard helicopters were revised and updated and much improved. And this has led to the reputation, the stellar reputation that Icelandic rescue volunteers have to this very day. In fact, these, these crew members, four of them, uh, who returned to Iceland just a couple weeks ago, were honored by the Minister of Justice, Gudrun Hastingsdottir, who told them in part, quote, we Icelanders will never be able to fully express our gratitude for your heroic deed on January 10th, 1994. Thanks to you, six of the seven men in Golden were able to return home to their families after that fateful day. They and all of us Icelanders will never forget you, end quote. Heartwarming stuff. Iceland's naming committee recently issued some rulings over this past week, adding several new legal names to the Icelandic lexicon. Now, if you're not familiar with this and you're asking yourself, what's a naming committee? So it works like this. Anytime someone wants to, to name themselves or their children something new, they have to submit this name to a naming committee. And they are an independent body that have the power to approve or reject this name. Um, and they go by numerous criteria. Amongst them is that one should be able to decline this name in accordance with Icelandic grammar. Now, to give you an example, take the masculine Icelandic name Ört, which means eagle, by the way. Now, in English, we would just say, here is Ört, about Ört, from Ört, and to Ört. In Icelandic, though, you would decline this in accordance with the four cases by saying, here is Ört, um Ört, frau Etni til Atnar. So it's a bit complicated. <laughs> now, the other criteria that they use is checking for historical precedent, whether or not this name has been used at any time before in Iceland. And most interestingly, whether or not a child would be bullied for having this particular name. And this is a very controversial criteria, which I'll get to later. So with this in mind, um, the committee rejected the masculine name Salvar, which is spelled S-A-L-V-A-R-R, on the grounds that ending a first name with two R's is just something that you do not do in accordance with Icelandic grammar. By similar token, they also rejected the names Josef and Henny. Josef, in this case, is spelled J-O-S-E-F. There's already an Icelandic name, Josef, that has an accent over the O, and so they rejected this new spelling. And Henny, in this case, is spelled H-E-N-N-I-E. -N this E vowel sound at the end of a feminine name is n typically not written with an IE. Mine is, but I'm a foreigner, so I can get away with it. Typically, if you end a feminine name with this vowel sound E, you have a Y with a little accent mark over it. And this is why they approved the name Buffy, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, B-U-F-F-Y with an accent. Now, going back to the criteria that a child might be bullied for this, it's kind of interesting that they accepted this name because biff in Icelandic is like a patty, like a, typically a hamburger patty. So, you know, but then again, children are children. Like whatever your name is, they're going to find a way to make fun of your name somehow if they really want to bully you. Other names that the committee approved are Listo, Arlo, Marlo, and Santos. Lastly, an Iceland news review, pagans in East Iceland um, we'll finally be able to begin construction of a hof, which is like a center for socializing and also worship. Now, that's right, I said pagans. In this particular case, we're talking about Ausutru, which is a, based on a, the pre-Christian faith of the Nordic peoples, that is worshiping the Old Norse gods, such as Odin and Freya and what have you. And their holidays typically mark the changing of the seasons. And Iceland's Ausathru Society has been in operation since 1972. It's been an official religion since 1972. 
Fun fact about this religious organization as well, they are the largest non-Christian religion in the country. They cr claim some 5,500 members. And they're a very cool group of people. And in fact, you, if you want to visit them, right here in Reykjavik, they have a, their temple at Öskerlith, which is where Petlan is. And so if you visit and you want to say hi to these folks or ask about their faith, you're welcome to go over there and check them out. So that's all I have for you today here on Iceland News Review, reporting from Reykjavik City Hall. This video is brought to you by Blue Car Rental, which is linked in the description. All of the stories that were discussed today are also linked in the description. We'll see you next time. Be good to each other. Thank you.